ए और एम ने बहुत सारे इनिशियटिव लिए हैं इस दिशा में और ये उन्होंने मैंडेट्स की तरह रखा है कोर्स कुरिकुलम में डाला है लेकिन नॉन क्रेडिट डाला है लेकिन ये बच्चे को क्लियर करना जरूरी है इसको आप ऐसा ना समझे कि ये क्लियर करना जरूरी है लेकिन ये व्यवहारिकता में या जिंदगी में यदि आप काम करोगे तो ये सारे विषय बहुत ही इंपॉर्टेंट विषय है तो ह्यूमन वैल्यू जिसके अंदर वैल्यू बेस्ड सिस्टम नहीं है वैल्यूज नहीं है तो वो कैसे काम करेगा वो फिर ज्ञान नहीं है वो आप कह सकते हैं इंटेलेक्चुअल तो कह सकते हैं लेकिन ज्ञान नहीं है वो तो यहाँ ह्यूमन वैल्यूज से कैसे काम करेंगे ह्यूमन वैल्यूज क्या होती हैं और किस तरह से हमको अपनी लाइफ में उनको आत्मसात करना चाहिए इस विषय पर भी चर्चा होगी तो ये जो हमारी वेबिनार है टोटली इंजीनियरिंग से हटके है लेकिन व्यवहारिकता से जुड़ी हुई है पूरी मैं इस विषय पर चर्चा कराने के लिए अपने अप्लाइड साइंस विभाग को बहुत बहुत साधुवाद धन्यवाद दूंगा जो इतना उत्तम विषय पर आज आज से चर्चा ये प्रारंभ करेंगे क्योंकि इस प्रोग्राम थोड़ा पहले से ही लेट हो चुका है मैं ज्यादा समय नहीं लूंगा आप सभी का बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद थैंक यू सो मच सर फॉर एनलाइटनिंग अस विद योर काइंड वर्ड ऑफ विजडम यू आर ऑलवेज मोटिवेशन फॉर ऑल ऑफ अस नाउ आई रिक्वेस्ट नोडल ऑफिस एकेडमिक प्रोफेसर मनु प्रताप सर टू शेयर हिज व्यूज फॉर द टुडेस प्रोग्राम बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद डॉक्टर नीरू बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद डॉक्टर नीरू यहाँ इस वेबिनार में उपस्थित हमारे निदेशक महोदय प्रोफेसर बी के सारस्वत साहब आपके मोटिवेशन से आपके सोच से आपके विजन से आज इंस्टीट्यूट जो है वो अपनी नई ऊंचाइयों तक पहुंच चुका है हम लोगों का सौभाग्य है कि हम लोगों को आपके साथ काम करने का मौका मिल रहा है माननीय स्पीकर महोदय आज के कार्यक्रम के मुख्य वक्ता साहब डॉक्टर जे शर्मा जी यहाँ उपस्थित सभी सम्मानित शिक्षक गण शिकाय गण इस कार्यक्रम को आयोजित करने वाली पूरी टीम डॉक्टर रेखा शर्मा डॉक्टर शालनी शर्मा और अप्लाइड साइंस की सभी फैकल्टी मेंबर्स जो इस वेबिनार के लिए विषय आप लोगों ने चूज किया है उसके लिए आप लोग बधाई के पात्र हैं क्योंकि बड़ा ज्वलंत मुद्दा आपने रखा है पर्यावरण मातृभाषा को बढ़ावा एंडाइजेशन और ह्यूमन वैल्यूज ये चारों विषय जो है वो अपने आप में आज के युग के लिए बड़ी पवित्रता रखते हैं और बड़ा इम्पोर्टेंस है इनकी तो थोड़ा सा एक बात बताना चाहूँगा आपको एक किताब मैं पिछले दिनों पढ़ रहा था तो उस किताब का नाम था फजीनेस एंड साइंस इंजीनियरिंग टेक्नोलॉजी एंड मैथमेटिक्स तो उसने एक स्थिति प्रस्तुत की थी उसने उस, उसने ये कहा था कि जो स्टीम हमारी है मतलब साइंस टेक्नोलॉजी इंजीनियरिंग और मैथमेटिक्स है उस स्टीम को पढ़ने वाले अधिकतर छात्रों के अंदर ह्यूमन वैल्यूज को लेके संवेदनाएं बहुत थोड़ी होती हैं और उसने एक अध्ययन प्रस्तुत करा था उसने ये कहा कि अगर आप उठा के देखें पूरे ग्लोबल मार्केट को तो 75 से ऊपर जो भी हमारे बड़े बड़े बिजनेस कंपनियां हैं ऑर्गेनाइजेशंस हैं उनके जो ओनर्स हैं वो ह्यूमिटीज के लोग हैं या अप्लाइड साइंस के लोग हैं मतलब आप ही देखिए कि सोशल साइंस का व्यक्ति जो है वो इंटरप्रेनर है उसके अंडर में हमारे स्टीम के लोग काम करते हैं तो उसका मतलब है कि इस भी व्यक्ति के अंदर ह्यूमन वैल्यूज होंगी थोड़ी संवेदनाएं होंगी थोड़े मानव मूल्यों को समझने की चेतना होगी वो व्यक्ति जो है वो इस बाजार को इस बिजनेस को और सभी चीजों को एक साइंस के एक इंजीनियरिंग के छात्र से ज्यादा ढक के समझ समझेगा दूसरा इसमें विषय आया मातृभाषा का तो ये बड़ा अच्छा विषय उठाया डॉक्टर साहब ने कि जो छात्र हमारे यहाँ रूरल रूरल बैकग्राउंड से आते हैं उनको थोड़ी दिक्कत आती है भाषा को समझने में और अपनी पढ़ाई को समझने के लिए तो मैं इसमें भारत सरकार की तारीफ करना चाहूँगा कि उनकी जो न्यू एजुकेशन पॉलिसी है उसमें इस बात पे जोर दिया गया है कि जो बच्चे की शिक्षा हो वो शिक्षा उसकी मातृभाषा में ही होनी चाहिए तो इस बात के लिए मैं अपने स्टूडेंट को भी बधाई दूंगा और सभी लोगों को दूंगा कि उन्होंने इस चीज को समझा और चीज को आगे बढ़ाया जो तीसरा विषय इसमें इंपॉर्टेंट है वो है जेंडर के ऊपर तो तो ये थोड़ा समझना पड़ेगा अभी देखिए जो हमारी भारतवर्ष की संस्कृति है उसमें हमेशा से स्त्रियों को पुरुषों से पहला स्थान मिला है आप उठा के देख लीजिए जब भी हम किसी ईश्वर का नाम लेते हैं तो पहले लक्ष्मी बोलते हैं तब नारायण बोलते हैं ऐसे ही हम पहले 
सीता बोलते हैं तब राम बोलते हैं पहले राधा बोलते हैं तब कृष्ण बोलते हैं तो ये हमारे यहाँ तो हमेशा से ये परंपरा रही है कि स्त्री का स्थान जो है वो स्त्री जो है वो पुरुष की शक्ति के रूप में है तो इस बात को अगर हमें अपने बच्चों को या अपने छात्रों को बताना पड़ रहा है आज के युग में तो ये थोड़ा सोचनीय प्रश्न है कि इस आधुनिकता की दौड़ में हम अपने नैतिक मूल्यों को अपनी सभ्यता को थोड़ा पीछे छोड़ रहे हैं जो फोर्थ विषय में है वो पर्यावरण के ऊपर है भारत देश प्राचीन काल से प्रकृति पूजा का देश रहा है हमने पत्थरों की पूजा की पानियों की पूजा की नदियों की पूजा की तो हम लोग ये समझते थे कि अगर प्रकृति है इन्वायरमेंट है तो ही मानव जीवन का कुछ मूल्य होगा तो ये बहुत बढ़िया सब्जेक्ट आप लोगों ने लिए हैं और मैं बड़ा मैं आप लोगों को बधाई देता हूँ कि इन विषयों को इसमें आपने समाहित किया और मुझे आशा है जो इसमें स्पीकर आएंगे वो इन विषयों के ऊपर आपको विस्तार से बताएंगे आपने मुझे बुलाया इसके लिए बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद Thank you so much, sir, for your valuable words. You are always inspiration for all of us. Now I request Dr. Shalini, ma'am, to introduce the today's speaker. Shalini, ma'am, over to you. Hello. Yes. Good morning, all of you. It is my honor and immense pleasure. that such eminent speaker is with us for this event i formally invite dr j s sharma as the first speaker to the workshop he is a renowned name in the field of environmental studies mr sharma has more than 38 years of experience in the field of pollution prevention and control in petroleum sector as ggm head environment ongc in june 2018 including at oil industry safety directorate mopng as additional director phd in chemistry from aga university and post doctoral studies from japan on global environmental issues in 1992 to 93 as st fellow Japan Research Development Corporation METI Japan he had one patent to his credit presented a number of papers in international fora in abroad including invited talks identified as resource person on international geosphere biosphere program for developing greenhouse emission inventories from petroleum sector by late dr ap mitra bhatnagar fellow ex dg csir chairman igbp and co author of petroleum sector ghg inventories published by csir npl he had been associated with numerous committee as an expert member related to environment eac industry mo efcc national task force on formulation of standard cpcb core group central crisis group alert system in ministry of environment and forest disaster management group of delhi government including high power committee on disasters set up by honorable prime minister of india justice jc pant committee member environment committee in ficcci helium committee dst formulated seven environmental standard guidelines published by oil industry safety directorate appointed osg to ozone cell in moef on deputation quality council of india nabet approved as eia coordinator and functional area expert for in four areas 2014 to 18 welcome dr sharma sir i am audible to everyone yes sir yes sir mera awaaz aa raha hai yes sir aa raha hai okay ओके गुड मॉर्निंग टू ऑल यस सर आवाज आ रही है प्रोफेसर वी के सारस्वत जी 
Director of Institute of Engineering Technology, Dr. Neeru, Dr. Manu Pratapji, Dr. Rekha Sharma, Dr. Shalini Sharma, convener, and connected various experts, students, professors, uh, and uh, I am grateful and thankful to the, my university, to the fellows that given me this opportunity. And Professor uh, uh, Sarasat, I think once we have interacted on the Agra University alumni through this webinar with the Vice Chancellor, and uh, this was this is our second uh, and yes sir yes sir second webinar with uh, Professor Saraswat. Yes sir. So, Talk. I am. Uh, this is. I am keeping a focus of four elementary things: understanding the environment, what are the resource conservation, and environment pollution control. So challenges in the climate change and mitigation. So I. I will share the screen now. It's, the screen is visible now. Is screen visible? Yes, yes sir. Visible. Okay, okay. So this is the uh, I have designed my today's keeping in view of the student interest and uh, some kind of beginning and some to to give a comprehensive idea of the uh, total environment. So. Not moving. Yeah. Uh, India is diversified climatic conditions at different locations. We have rain prone areas, we have hilly terrains to desert, we have rural in coastal areas, we have shallow deep water to shallow to deep waters in the sea areas. So these are the areas with very difficult climate conditions, and our operations are throughout the country, whether it is borderline, whether it is coastal line, whether it is particularly polluted area. So we need to manage our environment. Then I am coming to the facts. To give you a background, India is having 2.4% of the world surface area, 17.5% of the world human population, and 17.5% of the world cattle population. This data I am giving because the, the pressure on the natural resources by this large number of population, large number of population, on the 2.4% of the surface area, one has to see from this background. When our 30% population lives below the poverty line, and we have housing only for 20% population without, without housing. And then we have electricity about, without, without electricity about 25%. Then per capita income is the one-tenth of the developed world. And drinking water is about, situation is 92 million without safe drinking water. So these are the challenges. If anything goes wrong, then change in environment, only two things, either reversible or irreversible. For irreversible changes, it is very difficult to repair it, and repair cost is very high. So this, this I want to give the introductory note. Then another thing I want to say, the tree per person. The Canada has the world the highest tree per person, it is about 10,000. Then go next 4,900 to Greenland, Australia 3,266, United States 699, and France 203, Ethiopia 143, China 130, and UK United Kingdom 47, India is 48 trees per, per person. So world has about 422 trees for every person that is an average. This I am giving you because the, the, the plantation and the forest, they are also used for the eco-services purpose. And eco-service is the prime, prime, prime to maintain our ecosystem for the sustainability on this earth. Then the 
just in the background, just few days back, few months back, the alarming situation was that the low cost, low cost in the air, Tiddi, low cost in the air coming from Gujarat to Central India, moving towards the Northeast, then Corona on the ground already going on, then we have seen the earthquake beneath the surface. Then increasing frequency of cyclone, high speed winds, when both the coast, that is also showing that clearly indicates that something somewhere went wrong with our ecosystem that needs to be fixed before it is too late. Humanity finds itself confronting with the nature. That is the main, main, main thing. We are confronting with the nature, so we need not to confront and we need to protect our environment and ecosystem. Another issue I want to flag why the situation is so alarming. The 7 million premature deaths are there due to air pollution globally. Because high, high air quality index is there, then 91% world population lives in places where air quality is not good. Then health, we have a health impact of in, by the individual particle PM2.5 and, and the finer particle. Then the ground level ozone is the issue which leads to kind of several several uh, breathing problems. Then climate impact, short-lived climatic pollutants are there, like black carbon, methane, etc. Then there is the issue of agriculture waste, burning, disposal. We have about 38, 38 critically polluted areas, severely polluted areas, and other polluted areas. Polluted area. CDC has identified 102 non-attainment cities based on extensive monitoring. So let me explain. The critically polluted areas are especially in the Gujarat. They, they are the level of air quality and water quality and other issues crosses the total index is more than 70. It is it, on a scale of 100. So th those areas are notified as a critically polluted area and their expansion, industrial expansion, is controlled by many and governed by several rules. Severely polluted areas are those which are about to reach the critical level, about the 70 score. Then there are some 102 non-attainment cities. Non-attainment cities are those cities where in five, last five years when central pollution control monitors, and they found that it can reach to Critical areas and and they cross the they cross the prescribed level of the standards of the air quality. Then we have Indian coastline and eco sensitivity. We have largest coastline in the world, the 5,500 kilometer on the mainland and 2,000 kilometer on its offshore islands. And coastal area is known for vast network of backwaters in Kerala and other places. We have estuaries, we have creeks, we have lagoons, we have mangroves and coral reefs. Mangroves are very important from the climate point of view because they, it is considered they are the link between <coughs> fixation of sulfur, so carbon dioxide from atmosphere to the ocean. Then country is blessed with the beaches, all the coast recorded more than 5,000 species in marine flora and fauna. This is the gift of the nature which is given on this planet and one has, it is duty of everyone to protect these. And, but unfortunately, the things are not in good shape. Then coming to the just, everybody must be knowing the air environment, water environment, marine environment, land environment. This I am just giving you a background because if anything goes uh, wrong or we need to go to set up some new industry, and from, from the student point of view, they must need what to do for setting up a new industry or to monitor the things. So from that background, I am giving these components. So environment impact assessment is to be done, which is carried out to find out what, what will be the likely impact of the environment of the proposed activity. So it has several components that I will give one by one. The EIA is a... I mean, it, the, 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 the document should be, full, be fully integrated or with full of integrity 
and it should have be fair, objective, and uh, unbiased, balanced. So, so it should have full utility document, be capable of providing balanced, credible information for decision making and sustainability. It must address the sustainability issues. If, by, if that project comes or if that industry comes, the process should result in environmental safeguards. Then coming to the baseline studies, baseline studies, we need to go for air environment, we need to go for water environment, soil, stud soil studies, land use, risk analysis, etc. So ambient air quality monitoring, so there are guidelines by the, issued by the Central Pollution Control Board. We need to sample at least four to eight location in the study area, upwind and downwind direction of the site, location of maximum ground level concentration selected using the screen model or industrially US EPA model. Then parameters like PM 2.5, 10, sulfur dioxide, oxide and nitrogen, they, are, they need to be monitored as per the given terms of reference. Then there are certain metals to be monitored as per the prescribed in the National Ambient Air Quality Standards by the say, Ministry of Environment. Then there are some methodology, then using PM10 2.5 calibrated by CPCB of the of Bureau of Indian Standard Methods, then EPA methods 2.5, then CPCB procedure for the lag and benzene bevel, then BAP bevel, okay, then precautions to locate the sampler, that is also to be taken, it should not be placed under the tree or under the, some shelter where there is no free flow of air. So the issue, the, so the monitoring results are not good sometimes. The CPCB document guideline for locating AAQ monitoring station to be referred. Then there is a guideline that particulate matter, sulfur dioxide, oxide and nitrogen, how much station to be fixed. The region and population less than 1 lakh, it should be 4. Then 1 lakh to 10 lakh, 4, 4 into 0.6. So these are the formula one can refer and determine what, how many number of monitoring stations to be set up and required to give the representative, authentic, and credible data. Then we need to, this is very important, the metrology is very important. The micro-metrology also required to be studied because wind speed, wind direction are the key component which drives the one pollutant to other pollutant place in what direction, with what speed, with what concentration. So one has to study before setting of the station, then only they, they determine the various level in the ambient or, or at the GLC level. Then ambient noise is also there. The noise part is the part of uh, it is the part of the air quality. Then noise for noise monitoring, we need to sample four to eight location in the study area for all projects, covering all categories like residential, industrial, and commercial once in the season. So using these methodologies, using integrated sound level meter and DBA, calibrated one 24 hour day, daytime there are different standards, nighttime there are different standards. So accordingly one has to produce the data, authentic data. Then surface water quality sampling sta station, sampling at upstream and downstream of all natural stream in the study area, maximum number of eight samples we usually take. Then parameters for, as per CPCB criteria, there are more than 30, 30, uh, 30 uh, parameters to be tested. So the list is here, one can see and one can refer or you may be already knowing. But for this, producing the EIA result, one has to be accredited by NABL or the Environment Protection Act or through BIS, etc. Then groundwater quality, at least eight villages in the near area or the study area, depending upon the geology and hydrology, to be taken and once in the season to be taken. Then the most important part is when we are producing the data, surface water analysis should have reasonable balance between cation and anion. When results come, one has to match for the balance. So it should not be more than what you sample. 
then BOD and COD values shall be in order. Trend values of BOD and DO shall be in reasonable ratio. Because sometimes the consultant or the student or researcher, they produce such kind of data which is not practically possible. So this ratio has to be seen. Then BOD values in subsurface water usually not expected in normal conditions. So those results producing in the subsurface, the BOD value which, are, which is not expected in normal conditions should, should not be reported at all. Then toxic metal content in water shall not be abnormally high. If high, then sources need to be given. Then this, we need to study the soil quality, then soil samples from surrounding agriculture field, then all these parameters to be studied. Then land use is a very important part of the environment impact assessment studies because these days most of the agriculture land is acquired for the industrial development purpose and other things. The, the, whenever some industry comes, then the, the, the extension of the urban limit extended and the new, new cities are coming up. As a result, the as a result, the biodiversity is affected, biological environment is affected, and creates the hazardous waste problem, solid waste problem, water water portability problem. So this is the issue. So this need to be understood and need to be studied by satellite imagery and other other techniques. Then the biodiversity index and CSR issues they are very important. The biodiversity index need to be given. It is an indication of the what kind of environment is given to the habitats. So, Shannon, when are when biological environment, different flora fauna studies are undertaken, they must also report what is the index level. So, index level indicates what kind of environment or habitats is living. So, this is very important, and it is also important. Then, one one has to give the CSR issues, corporate social responsibility, or CER, corporate environment responsibilities. So there are two things. In, when when the CER there, CER means corporate environment responsibility. This is notified against the company laws, and no, no, this is notified under, under EPA Act and CSR. I'm sorry, and CSR is notified under Companies Act. So CER has to be there. Are, there is a Calculation method like income tax, 1%, 0.5%, 0.75%. It depends upon the cost of the project. So that has to be accordingly to be invested in the project area only, whereas corporate social responsibility funds can be invested on the all India basis based on the profit of the company. So the government try to protect the environment through this way. Then point wise action plan need to be prepared the timeline and amount, this is also one of the, the important parameters, uh, what they will, will do. So point wise action plan need to be prepared with the timeline and amount. If there are some wildlife issues, then wildlife management plan need to be prepared for approval of the wildlife garden. Then we have some social environment issues. It is also integral part of the impact assessment study. In this, not only the anthropological data is required, but social survey to be carried out where people have to go in the field, they need to interact, they need to identify the, the, the social requirement of the that a particular area which is under study or to be developed and what kind of need is there. So accordingly, the social action plan to be developed and prepared and accordingly CSR, ESR budget may be proposed and this, this will go as a part of environment management plan of a particular area, particular factory, particular industry to come, or particular city to be developed. Then there is, these days you must have heard that a lot of accidents are taking place, like like uh, Vishakhapatnam uh, styrene accident, Gujarat, so many chemical industry burned. In past we burned about uh, chlorine leakage and other things. These are the greater issues, and we need to study the risk assessment to be done in totality, not of part of the facility. Because when industry come, people do it in risk studies just to take a piece of paper of permission from the government. So that is not good. One has to understand or to study about how the risk to be carried out, what are the uh, what are the MSDS, material safety data sheets, parameters, 
then who, who are the people who stays around and what will be the likely impact of the releases toxic releases when anything goes wrong and up to what extent zone of influence will be there so this all need to be studied by 3d modeling to be considered for the assessment of the risk then we need to from the various storage of the facilities like uh, uh, near agra there is a mathura refinery so there is the storage of lot of flammable substances then these substances are carried through bullet through bullet uh, uh, bullet lorries and through to tank through tankers by rail and by road so if anything goes wrong this also need to be studied so the toxic flammable chemicals also need to understand and to determine including case of secondary pollutant formations and their safe distance need to be calculated then i am coming the principle of pollution control so this is very important when anything encounters the pollution level is increasing pollution level is decreasing i am audible no hello 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 oh acha theek hai theek so principle of pollution control the change at raw material level when anything goes wrong there are only three way of doing handling the things or to controlling the things one is either change at the raw material level or say for example if anything is polluting like coal coal burning the coal is being burned it it gives so many kind it gives ashes it gives particles it gives smoke it gives carbon monoxide dioxide and it contains sulfur sulfur dioxide also when combustion taking place it gives the nitrogen oxide also so anything we want to control either we do it at the raw material level so coal has to be washed in the washroom sulfur amount to be reduced ash content to be reduced so this is change in the raw material level for example in similar way in the past we have done it in the case of uh, petroleum uh, petroleum this gasoline the petrol the uh, earlier the government eliminated the lead lead was coming highly toxic and it, it, it affects the brain and memory etc so this is one part of it and now we have reached to bharat 4 to bharat 6 so again we are reducing the sulfur level from 50 ppm to 5 ppm then change in engineering design is another facility if anything you want to control second component second target is either you change the engineering design of the facility for example if you remember it when when the when euro euro 3 to 4 when we read then catalytic converter used to come with the new maruti cars and other, other things so or anything we want to from thermal power station we want to release then there are electrostatic the uh, precipitators are there back filters are there so they need to be uh, i mean considered for the changing in the design at the facility level then change at the exhaust level when two things are either we go for one by one or we apply two or combine or all three this depend upon the target or target level of the pollution or prescribed limit or regulatory requirement so change at exhaust level is also one thing so when we want to release the some emissions in the air so it has to be properly designed stack how much and what flow the gases will be released so we sometimes we air is mixed in the air is mixed in the uh, in the chimney so that the releases can be diluted or oxygen is considered to provide the complete combustion or electrostatic precipitate esps are put at the end of the thing 
and sometimes steam injection is also given so that the particulate which are coming out can be precip precipitated out. So these are the principles of the pollution control technologies which we need to understand fundamentally. Then some typical methods for pollution control. We have some observer for air pollution, we have some absorber absorbers. Absorbers are those when we pass the the our final emissions through some absorbing solvent, like uh, uh, like for example, lime water, we or we some other kind of solution where the pollutant that particular pollutant it can be absorbed in that absorber solution and of particular and the concentration of absorbers can be designed in such a way so it absorb all 90 with 90 percent efficiency 99 percent efficiency or sometimes we have to provide the chilling plant to recover the voc volatile organic carbons in the case of styrene the chilling plant was not working they got heated and they blasted emission release actually so the when we when whenever the storage facilities are large and I mean, and temperature is high, then the VOC started the emitting into the atmosphere or emitting started in the remaining portion of the tank, and they exert the pressures and they blast or they come come out from the tank. So absorbers has to be there, or the chilling plant is there to vaporize the and condense those vapor not allowed outside. Then there are certain solid materials coming to control the air pollution for so as a adsorber, for example, activated charcoal, which absorbs some hydrocarbons, even they are used for the uh, polishing of the, uh, the polishing of the uh, treated water to so that the solids and their impurities can be adsorbed at the surface. And even our household uh, water purifier, they, that also contain the activated charcoal. Then certain kind of filters are coming, bag filters and then paper filters and then cotton filters are there. They are also to be used. Then for large plant ESP electrostatic press precipitators are used. Stacks. Stacks are very important part because stacks has to be designed. There is a formula for DG set different. Then there is formula for different, but minimum stack height should be 30 meter for effective dispersion of the pollutants. Then there are some catalysts to be used for converting oxide of nitrogen in the tailpipe and the tail end convert to the less uh, to the less poly less level or less polluting level then there are certain other things like for example to convert the carbon monoxide if there is to the carbon dioxide or convert it to the water directly so some catalyst has to be used and are to be developed by different industry and they they are used for the pollution control purpose then there are some primary, secondary, tertiary pollutants also. And here this I am given with respect to the uh, effluent treatment plant. There are primary and secondary pollutants I forgot to mention here. Primary pollutants are those which are generated from some source and found in the atmosphere in the same form. But there are secondary pollutants, they are released as X and they, they become Y when they are released in the atmosphere. So it has to be seen from that point. So it is not only that we are releasing the, uh, the carbon monoxide and later it converts to the CO2, and so it should not be considered. So that part also to be considered. Then coming to the primary, secondary, tertiary, uh, then uh, biological and advanced treatment method, they are, we have uh, river, Imuna water, we have used for the drinking purpose in Agra, and we have some other industrial wastewater that need to be treated before it is discharged to the streams or subsurface as per the prescribed standard by the Central Pollution Control Board. So one has to see that primary, secondary, and tertiary. Primary are those we do only physical method. Secondary and tertiary, we use certain chemicals. Tertiary are the activated biological sludge and other advanced methods are ozonation or we have dialysis all those systems depending upon what kind of impurity we want to remove in the minimum budget 
that one has to see. So primary treatment to be given, secondary treatment to, to be given, tertiary treatment can be designed, and biological treatment to remove the VOD, COD, etc., VOD, etc., then advanced treatment to identify the certain special kind of things. Then ozonation is the latest in this method, in this uh, treatment system because ozone is nothing but it is a nascent oxygen. It is highly oxidated, highly oxidated, and it can be used for deodoring de 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 the things. It can be used to highly oxidize, or it it can be used to sulfur dioxide, trioxide to convert some other thing along with some catalyst. catalyst. Then there are some certain three. Three are recycling, reduce, reuse, and recycle. So it is not it is three R, but reduce people don't people don't uh, practice reduce. We, we believe in the only big things. We need more water, more electricity, big cars. So let us change in life lifestyle, which Corona is warning now, and we need to do accordingly. Then reuse and recycle. Then we do, after reduction the input level, we need to reduce, we need to re, uh, re, reuse, we try to reuse. For example, we need not to create more waste. So drinking water or waste water, we need to create or we need to use some kind of uh, other, other use by purifying or recycling. And these days, the or no industry is permitted to, to remove the to, 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 to discharge the water outside their premises and everything is ZLD, zero liquid discharge. So one has to depend upon the zero liquid discharge. Then coming to the noise, then certain mufflers are used, barriers are given, air barriers are given, air curtains are given. Then on the on a city like Delhi and other thing, then canopy of trees is erected. Then ear muffs are given when where nothing is possible, then ear muffs are given. So these these, these some some typical methods which is practiced in the daily life of the industry and city life to pollution control the methods. Then some other things are there like we have some low NOx burners. We have some tall stacks, 70 to 104 feet. We need to have some box flare. You, must somewhat, you, you are around Agra, must have observed the flare of the motor refinery. So it is properly designed flare. And one is to try to achieve the 100% uh, uh, combustion. No one wants to be given, but it is not possible actually. A lot of VOC comes, and VOCs are highly hazardous, dangerous, because VOC forms uh, uh, ozone. It has VOC and NOx in, in presence of uh, uh, some carbon particles, soot particles, in presence of sunlight, ultraviolet rays. Uh, they, 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 they produce the ground level ozone, which creates uh, a lot of health effect at the ground level. Then we have some online air quality monitoring. Now, this is also one of the uh, monitoring is just to indication. But people talk from the monitoring station, Lagadia. Lagadia means uh, it has no meaning towards control. It is an indication what level you are, but it cannot control anything. It is same thing like a Weather forecast. Weather forecast given, but can be given, but it never brings the rain. The rain comes when proper formation, proper meteorological and other things, climatological things supports. Then there are sulfur recovery units. So these are the sort of certain pollution control methods for air. Then effluent treatment plant for water environment, wastewater environment. We have effluent treatment plant of various kinds. We have a mobile effluent treatment plant. We have surface to subsurface and marine disposal because sometimes in the field, subsurface surface disposal is not permitted, almost not permitted these days. And people go for the either marine disposal of the effluent or, or for the subsurface injection. When subsurface injection is to be done, it, it has to go, it, it has to go down to the uh, to the beyond 1,000 uh, meters, and with certain kind of treatment, maybe 100 ppm uh, of uh, suspended solid and 10 ppm oil. So, in the, if the porosity is good, then one can inject. If treatment is not good, it, it, it will increase the porosity of this subsurface, 
and water, waste water cannot be injected to the subsurface. So one has to be very uh, clear about the uh, about the treatment system, inject quality of the water which is to be injected, or it has to be because coastline is not everywhere, so marine disposal facility will be available only such people who, who stays the, close to the coastline. Then we have some good capacity of effluent treatment plant in the country. Then produce water conditioners are become you know a lot of shipping business is also going on along the coastlines. A lot of offshore platforms are also there. On that also the wastewater generates. So it has to there is then then up to 10, 10 kilometers or 10 nautical miles from the coast is the considered as a territorial water which is Indian water and up to Outside that is the international waters. On international waters, only the International Maritime Organization, IMO rules, applicable. So one has to see those kind of things. So accordingly, and uh, after territorial waters, up to EZ, one can operate for mineral purpose. But the, the ownership of the water is the international water, the IMO. Then coming to the Hazardous waste management. This is very important. The you know, a lot of all cities are generating lot of uh, waste every day. Every every house is generating waste every day. So minimum waste should be generated. Or if the if the waste is to be biodegradable, then one has to gen try to biodegrade and uh, produce some kind of uh, valuable product like bio biogas and other things. So this is one issue. Then spent oil. Then whatever oil is being is there in any 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 waste, some kind of oily sludge are there. The, you know the, there is a uh, there is a uh, kick uh, the the exploration of the uh, of the mustard oil mustard oil. Yeah, so lot of um, mustard kick came out, but that also oil can be recovered. One has to see the recovery of the oil. Then hospital waste incineration that is also one part. Hospital waste is a very important waste because you are burning waste, a lot of uh, toxins will come out, but they, that has to be burned at elevated temperature. But they, at the same time, designing of the incinerator is very important. So NOx should be controlled and the carbon material to be produced to be controlled. Then coming the resources, resource conservation. Air which we breathe is need to be conserved because Air we, without a second, we cannot sustain. The air we take with respect to water may be 20, 20 to 25 times more. So if the impurity is less, 25 times less, it will produce the same same kind of uh, effect what water produces. But in a really small concentration of the pollutant is possible in the air and we, we use in the large quantity, so it, it will affect more. So air has to be breathed. So that's why air quality management program or prescribing the ambient air quality standards are very important. They are basically the health-based standards. So one has to see that WHO standards are different and Indian standards are different. They are a little liberal, but WHO standards are considered to be a little stringent. And one has to see and try to maintain. And we need to grow the more trees and click and click more trees and to produce the clean air and maintain the good ecosystem. Then the rainwater har harvesting, lot of wastewater, lot of uh, rainwater comes. And uh, in the previous slide earlier, I have shown that uh, how much scarcity of drinking water is there uh, among the people. So people should try to collect the rainwater, which is getting free of cost almost. And they can uh, recharge the groundwater level also. And water, rainwater harvesting in a good way. In Rajasthan, it is compulsory for the, each house from the, their development authorities that uh, one must have uh, rainwater harvesting facility from each home as prescribed by the town planners and other municipal corporation, etc. Then the rivers. The whatever rivers, you know, the funny thing is this, government every year gives almost 5,000 permissions all the industries. And every industry in their study says that their pollution is under control, their data is like this, and air and water for solid. But the, the fact is that all rivers are polluted, 
and there is uh, 120 city, 102 cities are already attainable cities. They are uh, they are going to cross the prescribed level of uh, air quality. So this one has to see with this background. In this actually, one is the flow of water is less in the river, and second is people are contaminating at high 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 flow. A lot of Delhi Yamuna, Delhi Yamuna, a lot of uh, uh, serious treatment plants are made along the river bank, but none of them is not functional properly. And it is going as it is. The waste is going untreated, partially treated to the river and contaminating and producing a lot of waterborne diseases. So, and the during Corona time, all the industries were closed. Now, no waste was coming. So the quality of the river was improved, improved, so fairly improved. So that also shows the industries are not, not working well. The other thing is flow in the river water is also one less. We might be knowing that there was Professor J.D. Agrawal, former member of the Central Pollution Control Board. He became Swami afterwards, teaching his students on environment in the Chitrakoot. And then he set on the fast until death for the Ganga cleaning. And he died because whatever he was remembering, whatever he was suggesting, government did not want to follow in that direction. But he has died for the cause, noble cause of the Ganga cleaning. And he was very brilliant, actually. The initial all standards of air and water was made in the central board in, in association with him under his direction. And he was professor of IIT Rurki and IIT Kanpur. Then coming to the ocean, ocean are very good sink for many things, but ocean should not be misused. Ocean should not be misused. Ocean is very, I mean, uh, uh, the, they are the sink for atmospheric carbon dioxide uh, through uh, through mangroves directly, and uh, they are very uh, provide a lot of uh, habitat for the fishes or underwater life and it is a good transportation and cheap transportation mode throughout the world. Throughout the world the oil supply is through waterways only, river to ocean only. And they, they are they are the lifeline of the country, country, many countries, all the countries I can say. Then, so ocean protection is a must. So we need to protect the ocean for our future, for our uh, for our uh, food requirement also, because it produces a lot of fishes. Then, I mean, certain amount of percentage of the population lives on the worldwide seafood. So this is one thing. Then blue sky, blue sky, clean air and blue sky was the was the dream to the Indians. But during Corona time, both the things were visible. There was a clean air because the air quality index has gone very low because of industrial shutdown and other things. And blue sky became visible again. The reason was that, that uh, there was no particulate matter and a, and AOD, the air, this density of the uh, air optical density was very less. It was less than 0.5. So the, there was no scattering of light, so blue was visible very well. Then mountains. Then mountain is very provide a very good ecosystem to the life of the people on this planet. One the mountains gives uh, like uh, uh, oxygen. They they protect. Uh, they form. They, they play a role in monsoon formation, and uh, monsoon also provide eco services to the people who 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 who, who lives far away from the mountains. For example, all the Himalayan states, they, they are doing a good eco-services to the people of the, of the who lives in the plain, not only the mountain people. Because, they, because the air quality, air pollution and other things, they do not play any boundary. It is, they, they are intercontinental and they are free from any boundary. Then the wildlife. Wildlife plays very important the way the cities are expanding, we are encroaching their space. When Corona time, you must have observed, a lot of news were there. Elephant entered into the colonies, deer came on the road, and uh, rhinos are coming to the outside around the park in the Kaziranga of Nassau. 
And eco service is a very important part in Himalayan states. All the Himalayan states are mountain states. They do not have the, any major industry, but still people live there. They provide electricity from hydropowers. They provide good oxygen, export oxygen, and they provide lot of habitat to the to the to the wildlife and uh, uh, other many many valuable things which uh, we cannot imagine now. They are like insects, look insects and uh, butterflies. They also play role to our life system and other uh, to many things. You know when when Himalayan states were there. They, 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 their chief minister demands because they can also set up some major heavy industry over there, but they, they, they cannot set up. They, because if they set up, then eco services will not be there. So they are given a special budget for eco services because they have to maintain the, they have to maintain the forest. They have to maintain the habitats. So this, they produce oxygen for the people. So this is very important part how the resource need to be conserved. Then I, I give little, uh, little uh, uh, issues on the global environmental issues. Like we have some global warming issues because of uh, uh, carbon dioxide, oxide of nitrogen, when, uh, sun, when, when sun, some radiation comes to the earth and it doesn't go out because of uh, uh, because of the layer around the earth, and uh, they produce uh, warming. And then depletion of ozone layer, because in stratospheric, uh, because atmosphere has several stages, like uh, troposphere, uh, stratosphere, ionosphere, and uh, mesosphere, and uh, uh, like that. So, a different stage vertically, the Trophosphere is up to up to the up to the 10 to 15 kilometers. Then stratosphere up to 15 kilometers from the earth. So well, in this part, the the sun radiation in presence of uh, in presence of uh, carbon and in presence of chlorinated molecules, ClO molecules and oxide of nitrogen, they react each other and they eat the ozone available there. So the ozone work as a shield to the bad radiation which uh, comes from the space to the earth. So it, sh it should not be there. So they, the, the, under Montreal Protocol, the CSCs were one of the found major source to chlorofluorocarbons to produce the, uh, to produce the uh, chlorine molecules, ClO molecule, which gives the chain reaction and eat the ozone. So that was an issue, but under motor, Indian, under international Montreal protocol, we controlled this, and India also comfortably uh, controlled the uh, issue of uh, uh, CSCs uh, phasing out. Then there are certain climate issues. Climate issues I'll come a little later, maybe. Then plastic disposal is the major. In plastic, ultimately, hydrocarbon product, and uh, its disposal is non-biodegradable, or if biodegradable, it, it takes several several decades to de to to decompose it, to degrade it. And in the ocean also, there it becomes an island of the plastic that creates problem to the to the underwater life, and uh, its disposal is really a problem. So one has to use the uh, you know about two years back there was a theme on the, well, announced by the United Nations World Environment Day, use one-time plastic. So that is one issue. Then coming to the climate issues, climate change. People talk, let, let me clarify this. Climate is the average weather at a given point in time of the year over a long period, typically 30 to 4 years. That is climate. Whereas weather can change not on day-to-day -day basis, but climate to remain relatively constant. It is a climate change. So if climate does not remain constant, termed as climate change. Then there are certain, uh, I'm going to finish another two, three minutes, three, four minutes. Then there are climate changing 10 clear indicators, which we have, like air temperature, 
is increasing over the land. Air temperature over ocean is also increasing. Arctic sea, Arctic sea is also ice is decreasing. Glaciers started melting. Sea level are rising. Humidity is increasing. Ocean heat content is increasing. Sea surface temperature is increasing. Then decrease in snow cover and temperature of lower atmosphere of Earth is increasing. These are the some modified climate change indicators that it is going to happen because some people have doubt that it is not changing. Then there are certain things like uh, challenges. Challenges in the sense emissions expected to be generated out of global unburnable carbon. You know, the climate issues triggered with the triggered with the carbon issues. As long as the carbon-based energy is there, then this will climate issue will continue. So we need to decarbonize the sector totally to have the uh, to have the climate uh, complete climate mitigation or zero emissions on the carbon dioxide etc. Which is not possible without eliminating the carbon fuel. So we need to decarbonize. Somebody estimated total available globally the carbon issue which is available in the subsurface in the subsurface that is fossil fuel coal natural gas and oil and if that all come to the surface today it will raise the more than two degree scenario and which is not the which is in variance with the climate change agreement climate change agreement says we need to restrict to the two degree scenario emissions to two degree scenario or limiting as far as possible to 1.5 degree for the small island for the small island places purpose. G7 nations already agree to phase out the use of fossil fuel by the end of the century, that is G7 summit in 2015. Six major companies also are to fix the carbon tax policy with the with the internationally, which is uniform to control this part. Then there are certain countries suspended the operations wherever the, there is an issue of climate like Arctic area and other area. Then climate agreement analysis, carbon neutral world sometime after 2050, but before 2100. This is very important because if we continue to eliminate, continue to release the, the carbon based fuel, then it is very difficult there will be disasters and a pandemic like this and it is to come. Then there are certain other indications like Rajasthan drought, run of touch, sea level rise, Mumbai salt water intrusion, Kerala productivity of forest, Tamil Nadu coral bleaching, Ganges sedimentation problem, Sundarban sea level rise, Northwest India reduction in rice yield. Then same the Ganges glacier taken by the, it is receding at a speed of 120 feet a year. So that is also one part this picture taken by the NASA. Then there was uh, in 2013 Uttarakhand disaster due to cloud burst coupled with collapsing of an upstream glacial lake. And in Gujarat also there was so blistering heat that uh, pedestrians were feeling difficult to to walk on the roads because of melting of the road. Then there is a change in climate. The apple cultivation in Himachal Pradesh has changed and suffered adversely due to it is not getting the right number of chilling period, December to January, so that they produce a good crop. Then submergence of land in Gujarat area by seawater. Then Dwaraka city is also submerged, which is like that only. So we what we can say is that India, uh, the post-pandemic, you must have seen and uh, some experienced news or TV news, Himalayas were visible clearly from Saranpur during lockdown period. Noise pollution replaced by symphony of chirping birds and return migratory birds. People even joked that they could see Canada from Punjab state. And others said that air was so clean that they would soon can see the God. It's, I'm just cracking a joke. It's not a this thing, but people talk like this. People were enthusiastic about the clean air. Then other benefits could be 
Across the Atlantic in New York, scientists reported in Columbia University that there was a 5 to 10 percent drop in the CO2 emission during mid-March and onward, and visibility of clear blue sky. So lessons from this COVID-19 lockdown is, it has taught us some valuable lessons. It is possible to achieve cleaner air when fast and decisive actions are taken. It is possible to have our blue sky back if we cut down fossil fuel emissions across all industries and sectors. It is possible to live in a way that creates less pollution on an individual level, that is travel less, ride a bicycle, or walk short distances, work from home if possible. So the, then way forward could be the current crisis has shown us that a clear that a, that a clear skies and breathable air can be achieved very fast if concrete action is taken to reduce burning of fossil fuel. Strengthening the monitoring network, check on ozone level rising, ground level, then energy and industrial structure to be upgraded, control over VOC and polynuclear aromatic compounds. So thanks for sparing your valuable time. Thank you very much. And I stop here. And anything is there, I can answer the questions. And otherwise, uh, we can, I can just... Thank you. Thank you so much, sir, for your encouraging and motivational talk. Am I audible? Yeah, you are audible. Thank you so much, sir, for your encouraging and motivational talk about a very important issue of climate change and sustainable environment. It is an honor to learn from you that how we can contribute toward the cleaner environment. You also provided solution to various environmental problems, like how we can recharge the ground level water and improve the water level. You also shared various other things like how during pandemic air quality has improved a lot. Sir, your talk has surely ignited mind of participant and I believe they are more committed to our environment. So now we move to the question answer session. If participant have some queries, they may write in the chat box, we will take up the queries. Sir, uh, there is a question from one student of mechanical engineering department, Sanchit Gupta. How much did the gain during this lockdown period? So please answer. Can, can you repeat your question? Yes, sir. I am repeating the question. How much did the ozone layer gain during this lockdown period? Ozone layer was not an issue here during this lockdown. The reason the ozone is already protected or restored at the stratospheric level. Ozone at ground level was an issue in many cities, including Delhi and certain other metro cities. So this was due to the, you know, during the, because ozone is produced in presence of oxide of nitrogen and the volatile organic carbon or two particles or, or and the uh, ultraviolet light and the, some chlorinated molecules, CLO kind of thing. So what was the source of chlorine in this case during lockdown? People use tons of new sanitizer, all alcohol. That gives a lot of VOC throughout the country. The, the consumption was so high, the people who were not doing anything, they just started producing, manufacturing the alcohol, uh, the sanitizer. Sanitizer people use like anything, uh, it goes through the atmosphere, and it reacted and and and, and generated the uh, the the ground level ozone concentration was high even in even in lockdown period. So it was a concern. Okay, thank you so much, sir. Sir, I have one question. How much the government policies on development are justified in the context of climate change? The government is trying to do uh, like uh, so, many, so many things. Like uh, we have uh, in the other presentation somewhere else, I made it that uh, from Euro 4 to Euro 6, we are directly coming. You know, Varas 4 to Varas 6 emission, yes, coming, reducing the sulfur dioxide. It will 60 to 70 percent cut the NOx level and it will also reduce the particulate matter. So this is one. 
then you know bharat force bharat 6 engines will be coming soon they are also coming they are also further reduced the things then we have certain uh, uh, project from uh, uh, like uh, producing the bi biogas from the waste we are producing the certain other uh, like uh, thermal power station uh, controlling the gases and fly ash by coming like this so government is taking a lot of policies are there to path breaking steps i can say to give you the right kind of environment and ecosystem yes thank you sir uh, there is one more query sir yes with the fast growing population and technological advancements do not human find themselves in helpless situation where they could not do much to prevent this global environmental degradation technical technical uh, development is a good evolving process but uh, as long as you know we need to change to climate to curb the climate change or to go for the climate mitigation it is very clear as long as we live on the carbon carbon based fuel we need to produce carbon dioxide and that is the main culprit for produce for the climate change so we need to decarbonize all the source we need to switch over the uh, switch over the e vehicles we need to switch over the solar energy we need to switch over the hydro energy or even nuclear energy so this immediate immediate is like this then there is a plan to go for the hydrogen energy in the time to come we will have already started in our country working on that so this is one second te technological evolutions are there but uh, lifestyle also one has to change actually you know like pulling of the pulling of the uh, car that is one thing and uh, pulling of the other major sources uh, like uh, you know the power which we use uh, i give you another example under sabhagya yojana of the prime minister the electricity is going to each house each house they say bulb is illuminated in almost all the villages and uh, under uh, uh, this uh, energy Uh, energy sector by uh, the by the cgd the city gas uh, development program they want to reach the 70 30% 70 to 73% population of the country this means what duplication of the work you are laying the pipeline to each house you are laying the pipeline of the uh, electricity to each house so both are uh, the double expenditure and they are, you are exploiting the resources this should be, people should think about at the policy level because they have to they, they, if they give the the gas to the direct to the thermal power station let everybody illuminate their house in the villages and uh, in the city and let the food system food preparing system to be switch over from uh, this to electricity so lifestyle change is very important we cannot have all the luxuries we have five flats five cars and uh, two ac in each room like that so that also produce some, somewhere something to the to the environment yes thank you so much sir taking up all the queries uh, the session was very fruitful very motivating and with all this we end up today's session and once again i thanks the eminent speaker dr jay sharma sir for finding the valuable time for the workshop and enlightening us through his talk thank you so much sir and thanks to all the participants for joining and listening patiently all other updates regarding tomorrow's session will be shared through whatsapp group today's session is end thank oh, you all thank you sir thanks to professor saraswat dr rekha sharma shalini sharma dr neelu and all 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 professor participants thank you very much i am putting thank you thank you so much sir yeah thank you sir.